record to cloud. I don't see it though, do you? I see, I was told recording in progress. Oh, okay. You right. never, you don't see it if you're logged in as chaos. Normally I see that little thing in the upper left-hand corner though. Mm. You know what I mean? The, I, see, I see it for what it's worth. Oh, all right. It happened to me yesterday in office hours. It was recording and I didn't know it because it didn't have the little. That thing, that little bar in the left corner mm -hmm. that's like. All right. Okay. Well, maybe anyway. hitting reset fixed the glitch. Maybe. Yeah, hopefully. Okay. All right. Well, welcome everybody. Um, I don't have a lot of things today. I thought we could maybe talk a little bit about things that are happening in the chaos project, just to kind of keep people posted, because I think it's important that uh, with our friends in, in the Asia Pacific region that you also kind of know what else we're doing in the chaos project. So um, I thought that would be on the agenda today and perhaps any new business that we'd like to talk about, or if there's anything mm -hmm. Elizabeth from two weeks ago, because I wasn't here. And like, if there's anything that we want to follow up on, you know what I mean, from the meeting a couple weeks ago, that would be cool too. Um, um, oh, oh I, I, think, I think I was on that meeting. We talked oh, a lot maybe, about GSOC. Maybe Elizabeth and, wasn't there. And we talked about metrics models. Okay. And okay. newcomers. Okay. And we had a pretty extensive talk. I don't know if it's captured in the notes, but we talked a bit about the uh, complexity, code complexity. Okay, I see that here. Metric Maybe model, and kind of it's not really exactly what we intended. Okay. What was desired. Okay. Well, we can give some metric model updates, too, is kind of what our plan is with that, Sean, based yeah. on some conversations that you and I have had. So. Yeah, I think Yuhui and I had a, a talk about the code complexity. Okay. The reason we're looking for is you know, reliable code. Okay. Well, let's, well, I got it on the agenda. We'll get there. All right. Okay, cool. So um, the first, I think, is translations. So the Chinese translations, thank you, everybody who's helping out there. Um, we the I think the review period is over. Elizabeth, correct me if I'm wrong, but the review period for metrics is done, or Sean, correct me if I'm it wrong. It ended April 1st, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. over. So um for folks just so you know we're kind of talking to the working groups to just to make sure that they all have the any metric any new metric that they have uh posted properly in the translations repository i honestly think we're pretty good i've done some review tried to like cross-reference the spreadsheet that we have you know what i mean with what's marked on the web page is under review with what I'm seeing in the translation repo, but it's probably worth just one more check here at the end. So as Kevin is kind of organizing things. Um, yesterday, Kevin had said, I think the release, the plan release is still like a week or two away. You know what I mean? Like there's not a huge rush <laughs> at this point. And I think Kevin just wants to take his time and get it done right. So um, does anybody else have any comments on, on that or concerns from the translations work or anything like that? I have a question, actually. So you know how, Matt, you and Sean and Kevin and I are going through the old metrics and adding the data mm -hmm. statement. Is oh. Do all of those have to go through translation too? Or how does That's that? That's a good idea. So maybe, um, maybe we could open an issue with that disclaimer statement. Although in the new metrics, that disclaimer statement is there, isn't it? It is in the new, but we're also adding it to the old ones, right? Yeah, so we should we could probably just cut and paste any okay. translation for that. You know, see what I'm saying? I do. Yeah. That's already been <clears> translated. <throat> just grab that. Yes, exactly. Okay. Yep. And we'll just so basically for everybody, um, there's a, a data privacy and ethics statement that we are adding to the metrics. And if you've been doing the translations, I'm sure you saw that. And that's a it's a relatively new statement that we've added like maybe in the last six months to metrics so every metric that was released prior to that does not have that statement in there um and but elizabeth kevin and i are just kind of going back through the old metrics to kind of add that statement and check I'm check out some some, other things What's i'm that? assigned to something too to go back through and review you are yep you are so um, so I think with the translation that occurs this time around, that block of text is something that we can copy and paste pretty easily in prior versions. So I don't think we'd need much translation work on that. So to, hopefully that makes sense. All right. 
Um, so again, thank you. Any other comments from from folks helping with translations? Again, really amazing. All right, cool. I noticed that we already got some friends from from Spanish. Yeah, so we're trying to we're trying to. Thanks for bringing that up, Yuhui. <clears throat> we're uh trying to build community around spanish translations as well and so that's something that we're hoping to do probably um in 2022 um so Sally yang who's helping with some of our dei efforts is is taking a look at that and she's you she's really just kind of following the model that you all have put together with the chinese translations so that was a huge help <clears throat> Can, any other comments? So. Yeah, just one more, one more comment. So I finally yeah. solved my camera problem. So okay. <laughs> I see you and I see you. I see you <laughs> twice. So hello. Hi. Finally. Did you have another comment, Yehui? Oh, uh, I think translation work is pretty good. Uh, as you know, we, we have some friends together with me to make it to, to make it done. I hope next time we will involve more, more friends from from China to help us to finish the in time. Okay. So I, I will say I think that the next maybe we might want to think about this a little bit. My guess is that the next round of <clears> metrics, <throat> the next release of metrics, is going to have a lot of priorly. Um, priorly re released metrics that are going to be under review. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? So like a metric from three years ago, um, it's possible that a, a working group is going to take a look at that metric and be like, this is kind of outdated. We need to update <laughs> some of the language and some of the way we talk about the metric. So we might want to think about how we, I mean, it may just be the same process that we say this metric. I know it was translated prior, but it needs to be retranslated. So just, just so you know, I think some of our efforts are going to be along that line. Yep. <clears throat> okay. Um, I think it's yeah, that comments. It's really just about maintain maintenance of our metrics, not necessarily always creating new ones, but reflecting on our existing metrics and working to improve them always. All right. Um, good. <clears throat> Again, thank you. A big thank you to everybody. And if time is an issue, just don't hesitate to let us know. Um, just here are some updates from the chaos community. So um, we are involved in three different mentorship programs at the moment. Is that correct, Elizabeth? She Code Africa, Google Summer of Code, and Outreachy. She Code Africa, yes, yes. Yeah. So um, with respect to She Code Africa, um, Elizabeth, do you want to talk about that just a little bit? Yeah, I'd love going? to. I'd love to. So we kicked that um, mentorship program off yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, we have two students and uh, they're going to be working on some Slack bots to help us um, make the newcomer experience a little better by um, pointing them to relevant uh, resources and things. And um, uh, I'm very excited about this. The nice thing <laughs> about She Code Africa is they did the pre-screening for us. So they get all the applications and then they decide who gets in and who doesn't. And then they assign us two people. So, well, yeah, they assigned us two people. Um, so that was kind of amazing. Sorry, from the, <laughs> from the org perspective, it was really fantastic. Um, and we have a, um, there is a Slack channel for She Code Africa that we're using to just kind of, um, kind of uh, facilitate and organize that project. It's a shorter project as well. It's um, eight weeks total, but uh, really the meat of it is like four to six. So there's some time in between or time before and time after for onboarding. And then at the end, just kind of wrap things up. And the mentors on that are myself, Ruth Ikiga and Matt Cantu Snell. So that's that. And it's, yeah, it started yesterday was the kickoff day, so. All right. This is this will be great. I mean, if we can make progress on some Slack bots that kind of help the newcomer experience, <laughs> yay! Because that leads us to our next one, which is Outreachy. <laughs> so Outreachy, um, Outreachy has, if you haven't noticed, in Slack has resulted in a whole lot of uh, traffic. 
So in the currently in the Outreachy Slack channel, I think we have 135 members. It's insane. Which is it went from zero like two weeks ago to 135 people who have an expressed interest in Outreachy. We were not expecting that. So uh, I kind of apologize for the volume of traffic on Slack <clears throat> and the postings to general and newcomer and like last time we did outreachy we had maybe six people expressed an interest <laughs> six and so 130 again we just weren't expecting that at all um so we and, and outreachy is we only have one position available in outreachy so um it's it's gonna be i mean it's less than one percent <clears throat> right in terms of <laughs> um selecting somebody to work in the outreachy project um so sean thank you sean sean ran a yeah. session on monday of this week maybe a couple hours yeah. just trying yeah. to help orient people who by the way how many people were there there were like a dozen people there okay excuse me one minute i have to take a call yeah that's fine and so um we had a like just the session just in terms of um sean providing guidance to the outreachy interested candidates. Uh, so thank you, Sean, for that. And I think he may be providing another one as well. Um, at this point, it, it's gonna go through the 22nd of April as to how students can express interest in the chaos project. Um, so there still may be some, some work being done, but we're gonna continue to try to get people to go to the outreachy channel and ask questions there. So. If anybody, uh, honestly, if anybody on this call is on the Slack channels and you see people maybe introducing themselves in the general channel or introducing themselves in the newcomer channel, you can say thank you. <laughs> Please check out the Outreachy channel as an appropriate place to, to have your Outreachy discussions. I don't know if this is the right venue, but um, something interesting, I learned two interesting things about Outreachy um, yesterday from the office hours, the regular office hours. One is that, um, they are, uh, Outreachy, I guess, had, had also presented their mentorship program at conferences. And so that's why we're getting the influx because they really ramped up, I guess, their promotion of gotcha. it, which we didn't know. Um, the second thing was um, Outreachy applicants are required to link to the PR that they submit when they apply. So that's why we're also getting a lot of people who are like, what can I, what can I, <clears throat> Do. What you know? What what can I, I code? See. Where can I merge? Which I want to talk to Sage about that because there's a lot of people who are helping out other people. They're attending the meetings, and that doesn't get counted anywhere. And so, right. if they do all those things and they don't have a PR because there's nothing for them to do, then I like that doesn't seem right. So anyway, I just wanted to bring that up. That that's that's also another reason why we've had so many people like just kind of desperate for something to I have see. that they can merge in. So that does make sense, and that I can see that as problematic because in the couple weeks that people have the opportunity to, to like demonstrate engagement with a community. Um, like doing a PR to fix a typo <laughs> is not a great PR, you know, like a just a grammar error. And then doing a PR to make a change to the project. I mean, there's really no way that we could handle 130 like substantial changes to the chaos project in in a couple of weeks there's just no way um, yeah um it doesn't seem like a very uh good model there i mean i get i get why they do that because mm -hmm. there has to be like some kind of proof that yeah you showed up and you did something but i feel like there could be there could be something for the non-code contributions as well i i agree um and if i mean i i was also like on the code contributions like prs are to me sometimes kind of an earned like level of trust. So like if Yui submits a PR, I'm pretty sure it's like in the best interest of the chaos project. And I'll, you know what I mean? Like there's an understanding of the project and it's probably tied to an earlier <clears throat> conversation. It's probably tied to some improvement somewhere. Um, but with 130, like that earned level of trust just isn't there. No, through no fault of anybody who's interested in the chaos project it just hasn't been built and so that is a problem and then to your point too elizabeth like i actually look at um i mean things that sort of matter to me is are like attending of the thing that sean went to or the thing that sean hosted 
like that matters. Like that's a out of the 130 <clears throat> people, if you're taking time to attend that meeting, that that matters to me. And um, uh, if you're attending the weekly meeting, you know what I mean? Like just to understand that matters to me as well, because that's trying to understand the project. <laughs> yeah, but I haven't stated things like that. I think it just let it happen organically. Yeah, I, I agree. That's, I mean, I guess we're tipping our hands. If, if we tell them that we're like, that that's a factor, then we'll have a hundred people show up. <laughs> Agreed. Elizabeth, did you have a comment too? You had on Not Okay. <clears throat> um, so, so just uh, hang in there with us, everybody. We're working on it. <laughs> and the, the traffic should change significantly in the next two weeks. Um, the other one is Google Summer of Code. Um, that seems a little bit better, just in terms of volume, as far as I can tell. I don't know what other people's <coughs> have that same sense. Some Chinese students ha has already contacted with me to say, could I attend the some Google Summer of Code in Kels? I said, of course, you're welcome. You, you can just, just pick up one one uh, task as you want and uh, you can yeah. start your your general task okay um and I, I haven't gotten the sense how many had expressed interest to you yuhui maybe just a couple i i have three students uh coming to me and, okay uh, and to ask if if they they can they can uh, join this uh, okay program. okay and I, I'd say that I can kind of think of maybe three others in the chaos project. Like it's a manageable number <laughs> that are also expressing interest in Google Summer of Code. Actually, I can pull this up really fast. Um, we can take a look. Thanks for. Um, I'll come back here and share my screen. So we can. Google Summer of Code interest. We do have one that's been merged. So this is the way we do it. You know what I mean? That we yeah. have people do some micro tasks. I'm trying to see. We have a couple pull requests, it looks like, for Google Summer of Code. Mm -hmm. um, but then I don't think. Yeah. Right now, Sean's the only person who's expressed an interest in, yeah, in outreach. -y. Okay. Um, so I mean, this is uh, we do have some applications in the outreachy app that are coming in. Okay. And they have merged a bunch of outreachy pull requests. <clears throat> okay. But they have until was it, April twenty second. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, we might want to just continue to encourage, like, in the outreachy channel. Don't forget if you're interested. You know mm -hmm. what I mean. So you have, so to, they your... have to create a PR or to, to add their interest to, to the Google yeah. Summer Code. Yep. Okay. Yep. So okay. on this page right here. That's Google Summer Docs. Oops. Season of Docs. Sorry. Of Docs. I get confused too because it's just uh, one it, different letter. It's GSO. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, if they could, what they do is they do the micro task. Okay. Uh, could, could, could you attach this link to the, the minimum docs yeah. i can i can share yeah. it with my friend yep um yep so here is this and then um what they do is for each um thing that they have an interest in so we have a set of ideas that we had submitted to Google for Google Summer of Code. And so here yeah. are the Google Summer of Code yeah. ideas. And it has associated micro tasks that we asked yeah. them to complete. So hopefully they've seen this too. And, <laughs> and the, oh, I was just seeing a white screen. Hold on. Uh, something died. Okay, so there are the the micro tasks. Okay. Good. Okay. Good. Thank you. Um, any other comments on mentorship?
I think maybe the last one is we have maybe some interest in doing Google season of docs, but at this, at this moment, I can't think about more mentorship <laughs> about adding more. So yeah, no, the, my brain's kind of full on that one. Um, I just wanted to keep you updated on some DEI initiatives that we're thinking about as well. Um, I think a lot of you know that we have like one of our metrics models is the DEI event badging program, you know, so we have the event badging program. So as events want to think about diversity, equity and inclusion, they can submit a request for a badge. Um, and we've had a lot of success in that. I think we have maybe 50 events that have been badged. And I think right now, Elizabeth, there's maybe three or something under review, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. I think two, two, I think. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, Open Source Summit North America is one that's either under review or currently in in review or has been reviewed. So um, it's really it's great to see these really kind of large events. We do KubeCon <laughs> as well. Um, so one of the things that we're looking at doing in 2022 is starting to uh, um, expand the badging program to include projects. So a project could submit a request to an open source project could submit a request around DEI. Um, we're not quite sure what that would look like yet. So from an event perspective, it's pretty straightforward because the event has a time boundedness to it. And the things we ask are usually just on an event website. A project is going to be a bit different because a project extends timeline like for forever really. And we'd have to think about things like recertification or how long a badge lasts. Mm -hmm. um, there's also way more projects than there are events from an open source perspective. So we need to consider that as well. And one of the things that we do have trouble with, not trouble, but uh, um, like just we're always thinking about it with respect to the event badging program is the number of reviewers that are available. It, it's a human review process. And I'm not entirely sure that we can do this with projects. <laughs> like if we had two, two required human reviewers for every project and we had a hundred projects submit, I, we just don't have that capacity. That's just not available. So um, that doesn't keep us from thinking about it, I don't think, but I think the model, the workflow is going to have to be different for projects. And I'm not sure what that different looks like yet. So if you have thoughts, it doesn't have to be now, but if you're just thinking about it, how we might go about asking projects, like where is your code of conduct? How do you consider enforcement? You know, what are your paths to maintainership? Like the metrics that we have in chaos that we could ask them about, that how we would scale that model. Um, if you have thoughts, that'd be great. So um, the other just, to from a DEI initiative perspective, we're also going to be talking with um, on the 25th of April or something like that on a Monday. Yeah, the 25th of April. Um, uh, Joanne Lee has has agreed to come to our one of our DEI meetings and she's going to talk about code of conduct enforcement with us. So she this is kind of for Elizabeth and Sean, too. So. Mm -hmm. Code of conduct enforcement is a kind of a growing concern in at least in the United States. So if there's a it's one thing to have a code of conduct and be able to point to it. It's another to be able to enforce a code of conduct. So from a from what I understand from a legal perspective, it can be quite complicated that if you kick somebody out of a project and um, kind of give them a, a negative mark. <laughs> for being a bad actor that could have implications for their career. Yeah. So um, if somebody, for example, was kicked out of the Kubernetes community and they work at a company that requires Kubernetes engagement like that, there are legal concerns, at least in the US. So we need to understand what enforcement parameters are. And I don't, I don't think I know what they are, Elizabeth, I don't think you necessarily don't know what they are. <laughs> They're very complicated. Did you have a comment, Elizabeth? <laughs> I didn't mean to put you on the spot that you don't know no, something. No, but... I was gonna say, I, I know generally what they are, um, but not like, I. it wouldn't stand up in court. We'll just put it that way. And I don't know, I'm not familiar enough with other countries as well. And like, 
where does the project live? It's like, what country are you, you know, is it GitHub because it's on GitHub? Yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot, so. So we need to, so Joanne is, is being very kind to come to a meeting and kind of give us kind of where she's at in the structure. And I think she does a lot of really great work in this area. So I'm very happy about that. So it's, it's for our own project, but also maybe parameters for other projects as well. I mean, if we could share some of that information, that would be wonderful. Okay, um, that's what's happening. Do, oh, yeah, do, we, do we have any? Do we have any talk? <laughs> talk. Um, um, we can say about uh, the history discussion about the DEI. Just in terms of like enforcement, like historical. History, his history, his history yeah. discussion about DEI. Um. So just in terms of DEI in general, we do have kind of long standing discussions in our work group meetings. Is there um, a link? Yeah, yeah. yeah, um, yeah. Maybe Elizabeth or Sean, could you maybe yep. put a link in here? Up and grab that. The, yeah. To the you. DEI work that we do? Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for asking. Oops. All right. Um, any mm, other yeah, comments or questions about DEI? All right, great. Um, you we, we, These are we're interested um, in this and uh, trying to put our um, project in, in EI, but um, maybe uh, I could see the history first. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. You could take a look at some of the things we talk about in the meeting minutes because we have extensive meeting minutes and you could just kind of scan those. And then what time is it in China right now? It's half past nine. Half past nine. Okay. Because yeah. the meeting, the DEI meeting is. It would be 11. It's 11 o'clock your time, 11 p.m., like in the evening, your time. Okay. So that's pretty late. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, but June, I mean, if you have an interest in this, we would definitely find a way to, to include you in this discussion because we're always mm -hmm. looking for mm -hmm. more perspectives. And if, if you do have an interest, just don't hesitate to let us know, and we're happy to find a way to work with you as well. Okay, okay, I will let you know. Thank Great, you. thank you. I'm putting the I'm putting the links in the um the chat, but I can also put them in yeah, the minutes too. Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so again, this is just a kind of an overview of what's happening in chaos right now. So just so you understand, I think it's important to maintain these connections. Um, we are planning on running a ChaosCon Europe in connection with Open Source Summit Europe in Dublin. So that's going to be in September or October of next year. Um, we The call for papers is open. I think it's, I don't know if it's on the website quite yet. Let me, I could take a, take a look here. Do you know if it's open? Uh, we talked about it in the meeting yesterday, and I think there were a few small changes that were okay. required. So, my guess is Kevin is. I think Monday. I think we're shooting for. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't see it. Oh. Well, no, this is still the other one. Which means I I can collaborate with someone to write the paper for this meeting. Or... <coughs> yep, and we're gonna be doing. Um, kind of three talks so one is going to be an in-person talk and then one will be a, a live i think we're doing are we doing live video Elizabeth? yes we are i think we are i thought we were not okay oh we were not maybe we're not i think it depends on that thing that we looked at while we but were we're doing i know at least we're doing recorded video mm -hmm. that we would show and they're about 10 minutes and then we're doing like recorded straight to youtube like that wouldn't be in the conference program. We're doing kind of three things. One is live talks. One is a recorded talk that would be shown at the Dublin meeting. And then the third is a recorded talk that wouldn't be shown at the Dublin meeting, but would be part of the Chaos Con like YouTube channel and release at the end. You know what I mean? Okay. Yep. So you are more than welcome to participate um, in that way. And we'd love to have you participate as well. On it. I mean, I'm if you just I did, did you yeah. did you all meet the Chaos Con planning committee meet after the meeting yesterday? We did. Yeah, okay. we did. I'll check but, those notes. And I think that's why I think we're done. 
Because like we went through the call for proposals that you had put together, that form. Okay. Yeah. It was a submission form, I think, is what it was. So one one change was on the form that Kevin had on the website. He needed to make it to the current link to sign up, and I think there were a couple of other really small changes we needed to make to link to like that was um, code of conduct. I think. Oh okay. yeah, we do have a question about code of conduct yeah. that I have not sent. So we have our own code of conduct, and the Lord <clears throat> Foundation has a code of conduct. Yeah, and they're different. Yep. Just because it's like different, like reporting. <clears throat> like if there's an incident, where do you report it? Yeah, they're not wildly different. They're just no okay. different. Who, who is the person that would? Yeah, okay. But like okay. Maybe it, if it's if we use the LFs, it's their event staff. And I my in my think, guess is we're going to get rid of our own code of conduct and just follow okay. the LF one. Okay. Yeah, it does ultimately seem redundant to maintain a separate one when sure there's is fine. I'm wondering if this will take me there. It does. All right. So there, there, there it is. So it's not live on the website yet. But it's just I can just put it in the in the minutes here. There you go. So I think Kevin, like like uh whatever his name is, Sean. <laughs> I'm looking right at you too. <laughs> Sean, Kevin, Steve. <laughs> the person sitting right there. Um, and so I just think there are a few little details that need to be just kind of sorted out just in terms of where the links go. You know what I mean? Submit your proposal right here. This is the form that Elizabeth had put together. I think we're all good there. Here you go. So it's a lightning talk, five minutes in person, regular, oh, and then pre-recorded. That's our only other option. I think that was based on feedback. That's why I was getting a little confused because um, that was based on feedback from the yeah. last chaos con. So, um, but that being said, I think we also had talked about accepting recorded talks, but showing them separately or doing something different. So I'm not sure if there's space for that in this form or where we would want to put that. Mm -hmm. So would it be, what is it though? A recorded talk, so like a pre-recorded talk. They We were limiting it to 10 minutes um, because that was the feedback we got last time was that yeah. the recorded talks were a little long to mm -hmm. like keep the audience engaged. So we do have pre-recorded talks, but they're small. Right. Okay. Yes. So if we okay. wanted like regular session talks or like long form talks recorded, then that's a whole separate conversation and it would have to be a separate Thank yeah you. and what came up yesterday and i think this was good so i don't think anybody had a problem here and so then what came up yesterday is we would accept pre-recorded talks and then when we do acceptances we would say you, you have a pre-record thank you for your submission to the pre-recorded talk you know we plan on your, your congratulations you're accepted and we plan on showing this at chaos con like during the event would you be available to answer questions and do q a during your talk or during the event and then the other acceptance would be congratulations your talk was accepted it's not going to be in the half day event but we're going to add it to the youtube channel are you okay with this as well so okay so i, I think we're getting pretty good here just a few little details uh, to sort out um and if anybody, I mean, honestly, in terms of like joining the Chaos Con committee, if anybody wants to help review <laughs> submissions that come in or you kind of give feedback, uh, don't hesitate to let us know. We're happy to, to include you in that process as well. All right, thank you. Any questions on Chaos Con? Starting to see people in person. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, metrics work. I think we kind of talked about this. Um, Sean, I just I wanted to bring this up for you. Um, so one of the things that we're focusing on in 2022 mm. is creating more community around Augur and around Google software. Lab. Yeah, both of them. Do, so yes. So yes, we have a pretty good like community around metrics and metrics models and DEI event badging, like these programs. But one of the challenges that we've had really throughout the process of chaos is building community like sustained sustained community around software development so sean do you, do you have thoughts on on this and kind of where you're at 
I mean, where we're at is we, uh, Daniel and I spoke with his team um, when we were in Spain last week or before I'm losing track. I think it was last week. Yeah. And we're going to each install the other's tools and get them working and then begin to develop pathways that we can push forward um, uh, sort of support of the metrics models and support of Grimoire Lab so that people could have like working models of Augur and Grimoire Lab and learn how to contribute to each project. <clears throat> so what what would the pathways yeah. to contribute kind of look like? Do you, have you talked about that? Yeah, but only in, I mean, we're just getting started. So only in very general terms. And that's, okay. the, that's the part that I think we each have to figure out. Um, so it requires a little more knowledge of on my part of Grimoire Lab and on Grimoire Lab's part of Augur. Okay. And that's, that's the first step. Okay. That we're taking. I really like this idea because in the last metrics model meeting, uh, I, I gave a demo about how to use Scrimlab to collect data for the metrics model and how to, how to show it in visualization. Awesome. So, so, uh, I think either basically what was in the meeting, but, uh, Sam and, and Matt, you are, uh, you are not available in that meeting. But I, yeah, we were in Spain. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I spent like a half an hour to to uh, to introduce the the uh, community activity this metrics model. Uh, I compare. I I choose two communities, and uh, to anonymize the, these two communities name because I have no intention to say which is better or not. I just using this metrics model to show it's a. Uh, effectiveness mm -hmm. of the of this model and how to use in Grim Live to, to collect data to 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 how to how to analysis the final result uh, as a general and also you can you can search in, uh, go inside into the each of single matrix uh, to to see what's wrong with the uh, with with, uh, with the detailed information so I think uh, we can use this way to to showing how to how to uh, using Green Lab to do the first work. <clears throat> I, I like this a lot because, and Sean, this may be a path for community building because if I think about a lot of open source projects, um, contributions to the pro software projects themselves are not because I love that piece of software. It's because I'm trying to do something with that software. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, the and, other, I was looking for my notes. The other, the other thing we discussed is um, increasing engagement of corporations and, and providing pathways for organizations to contribute and potentially commit developer development time to the chaos software suite. And so that's another possibility that we discussed. Right. I think that also, oh, sorry, Sean. No, I just did not immediately remembered that. That's why I was, I was spanning, spanning through my notes to find that page. So I was if, just going to add um, that promotion is, is a big piece of that, I think, too. And that kind of goes yeah. in, uh, it aligns with the increasing corporate engagement, but also um, increasing usage and promoting the software a little more effectively. Because like right now we don't really show who's using Augur, who's I mean maybe Grimoire yeah. is doing that, but I don't. Yeah, we could we could right. do that better. <clears throat> yeah, we can. So, what if the angle was kind of like what Yahoo was talking about? That was um, you meaning company or you meaning person need metric models, but like that's the you need these things to help understand the communities you care about. Like that's the first entry. Um, now, in order to deploy them, you need Augur and Grimoire Lab. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And so, um, so when Yahui is trying to deploy a metric model in Grimoire Lab, I'm guessing that um, like wrote, like raised some issues for you <clears throat> with respect to the software. Like there are things that maybe weren't perfect in the software, and so the the goal is is to fix that piece of software to to get the metric model that you want. Does that make sense? Like, um, 
people contribute to the, for example, Kubernetes, not because they love Kubernetes, but because they're deploying Kubernetes within their organization and it's not doing what they want it to do. So they contribute back upstream to get Kubernetes to do what they want it to do. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm wondering if metric models might be like that, that expressed interest from people. Is that, I don't know if this is making sense. Like you don't contribute to Augur just because for Augur's sake, or you don't contribute to Grimoire Lab for Grimoire Lab's sake. You contribute to them because you're trying to get them to do something for you. Um, and, and maybe metrics models are those things that we want. <coughs> thoughts are on that. Or if I'd made no sense, it's possible I made no sense. No, I mean, it made sense. It was just like a lot of it's a, like a lot of ideas. It's just yeah, it's, yeah. it's one idea that like that we instead of just saying come contribute to Augur because it's Augur. Yeah, like we don't say that. Don't we're not trying to convince people to contribute to Augur just because it exists. No, we and we want to we want people to. This is where the promotion that Elizabeth mentioned comes in because I think we want to help promote Grimoire Lab. A bit more. I, I think that they feel awkward about doing it themselves. And so I think putting it in the newsletter prompts us to prepare stuff um, and to, you know, to be promoting the tools and, you know, different characteristics of them. But is it, is it promoting, like, I'm trying to make the case that it's not about necessarily promoting the tools. Mm -hmm. Well, it's about the, promoting the things that come from the tools. Right. Chaos. It's promoting chaos, metric models. Yeah. Implemented. And here's a way to do it. That's right. I, yes. That is the thing to promote. Because those are the things yeah. people want. Yeah. Like nobody wants, I mean, being recorded, nobody wants Grimoire Lab. Like, but well, they like, like the data that comes from Grimoire Lab. I <laughs> want wheels that stay on my car. I, I don't <laughs> have the specs. I don't know the names of the tires or even what size they are. I just want the wheels that don't fall off. Yes, I need the, uh, the, <laughs> the end of the line. That's what I need. Yeah. <laughs> and so maybe the promotion is, I'm just thinking maybe it's metrics models. Like even yeah. like, like I'm thinking like DEI badging. Like, I don't know that people tremendously care about the workflow <laughs> like that you're doing Elizabeth around DEI badging. They just want the badge. <laughs> they they want to show the things that they're doing and there's a badge that comes from that and that's and and maybe the software is the same they just they want the metrics models because they're useful <laughs> they're, they're well vetted and thoughtful and they answer questions so uh, all right yeah i have to mention that they are true and i i totally agree with that especially for for my company you know we, my company not just running for the open source, doing a lot of contribution for the open source, but also for the inner source. There are lots of projects we running as the inner source projects, and they are they are have a lot of requirements, just like the to 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 using some some tools similarly like uh, Augur or Grimlab to help them to 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 mirror the inner source project to see if it's healthy or not. But they really don't care how to how to implement such tools. You just told me how to install these tools and quickly to help me go, to tell me what's the result of, of of the project situation. That's the truth. Yeah. Yeah, and then contributions would come if if the results aren't necessarily what say somebody at <clears throat> Huawei wants to see, then contributions can go back to Augur to help exactly. improve that what needs to be seen. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Sean, I don't know what you think about this. I mean, I'm totally yeah. no, no. I think it's making a lot of sense. It's making a lot of sense, and I think it's uh, it's easier and more straightforward for non-software developers to understand. Yeah. I also touched by uh, a Google Google Doc about community activity because in the tool toolkit part. Uh, I introduced uh, how to analyze these uh, visualizations uh, based on uh, my understanding. So I think it, it would help someone to understand how to use this metrics model to measure their uh, communities activities. Gotcha. Is that a is that a link down here? 
Uh, no, uh, the chat. It's in the chat. Okay. Yeah. All right, gotcha. So down in toolkit. The last, the yeah. last uh, section. There we go. So what are we looking at here, Yuhui? Yeah, Do I... still go go down. Scroll down. <coughs> Uh, yes, yeah, go down. Yeah, here. I show in the matrix using the gotcha. dashboard. Yeah, yeah. I explain the each of single dashboard to say what 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 that it means because it's a, a demonstrate as um, one metric. You know, all those metrics composed of as a matrix model. Got you. And you're providing, it looks like some insight as to how to maybe interpret this or what yes. would be one way to think about this yes, model exactly. in practice. Okay, cool. Well, I will take a look at this. I have, I have not seen this. Have you shared this before? Yeah, I shared it on the on last metrics oh, meeting. Okay, but I wasn't. <laughs> okay, well. I put a link to the recording in the minutes. Okay. So if anybody wants probably, to go back and watch that, Ken. It was great. That out before the next um community call or the next metrics model call okay great uh wonderful so hopefully this was helpful for people i think sometimes it's just important that we kind of talk about what's happening in the chaos project as a whole so again our friends in asia pacific region kind of know what we're working on that may not be occurring in this meeting so we are at the end of our time um was there anything <laughs> We're at the end of the time. Is there anything anybody wanted to bring up? And I and you have no time to talk about it. So go ahead and <laughs> and bring it up. But first of all, first of all, let's say sorry. Uh, <clears throat> because in China we just have three days vacation, so I cannot. I missed ah. the forum discussion meeting. So I'm so oh, sorry. No problem. Yeah, we're we're kind of talking through. I think we're making pretty good progress on the forum <laughs> meeting discussion. So, um, and I'm glad you had a holiday. For some time yeah, off. Yeah. Everybody yeah. needs time Maybe off. Maybe I'll go through the, the discussion record reading, uh, recording. And okay. Um, yeah. Thank Sounds you. good. Thanks, Yehui. All right, everybody. Uh, have a great week. And yeah. we'll talk to you very soon, I think. Yeah. I'll be in the metrics. Okay. Bye. 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 See you. See you. See you.